just recorded about 20 minutes of footage with the plug for the sound not quite in the camera. Darn. There we go. It's all good fun. Well, the grass, well, the grass is, is trying to intimidate me. It's growing faster than I would like, but I'm going to resist. I know I've got a bit of a clover forest going on here, buttercups and well, all sorts of weeds, but hey, you can mow the lawn and the grass all the time. There's plenty of other things that are more important. So I'm just going to live with it for a few days at least. Well, the sweet peas are coming on a treat. I'm getting to the point now where I think we're going to have to tie them to the canes, but it's great to see those flowering and the flower beds looking good. The calendula, I've not had such a good start to the year, but they are coming. So we've got quite a few plants in there and we've got quite a few in there mixed in with some poppies. So hopefully we'll have calendula this year. It's certainly going to be a little bit less than last year, I think, or at least a bit later. I wanted to show you the gooseberries because I've been badly attacked by sawfly, as you know, and you can see the effect on those gooseberry bushes. But I've left the gooseberries on and I'm starting to get some new growth now because I think the sawfly period is over and I'm hoping that these will mature a bit more. There's not many on that one. There's quite a lot on that one. So hopefully we'll get a crop off of that. Same with this one. And then over here, it's really not as bad. And we've got some fruit turning pink there, which is nice. This one got a little bit attacked in the middle, but it's okay. And then these were fine. And there's some fantastic fruit on these. Look at that, beautiful. And the same over here, no problem at all. So the gooseberries all in all, well, I did get out of an attack, but after learning really to shake them off the bushes and get rid of them, that made a big difference. And I've got lots of great suggestions from viewers for what to do next year. They're coming through now. There's quite a lot of fruit on these bushes. As you can see, I've been really negligent with regards to the border of that area. And the grass has just taken over. It's a real challenge, this area. Maybe on my list for this winter. We'll see how things go. Down on the raised beds, well, the field of kraut cabbage are looking amazing. And looking at the size of them, I think I could probably have got away with four, but I really restricted what I put in there. It just shows how important spacing is. And I've got one bed still to plant. This is gonna have some more swede and possibly some turnips in it, but I sowed those and they haven't germinated quite yet. And I'll start putting some more turnip in here when they've germinated. Now, I've got a little bit of sowing to do today for spring, which I'll show you. I've just noticed, I think we've got a head on the broccoli there. That's good to see, seeing that this bed has definitely got club root in it. But putting garden lime in is really working well. I popped a spare plant in amongst the cow because one didn't make it and he seems to be doing okay. No attack on him yet. And uh, we've got another mound in here, which I'm afraid is just part of growing on this plot. Good to see the beans getting up even higher. And as far as beans are concerned, I was looking at the broad beans this morning and this is the spot that I will eventually put the purple sprouting broccoli in because those onions went in really early. So I guess they'll be the first ones to come out. And these, once they've podded, we'll get the pods off and then probably pull those plants out. And that'll give me a good location to get purple sprouting broccoli this year, which I'm gonna grow more than I did last year because it was so good. But when I was down here looking at these this morning, I noticed that we did have some black fly, got some black fly in there. So I've been pinching out the tips. Let me show you. So these are quite badly infested with black fly. And I tend to pinch out the tips when I see that. And then, well, once you get to this stage where they're flowering well and they start podding, 
that little bit of black fly never seems to do any huge amounts of harm. So that is one of the risks of having your broad beans exposed to the air. And of course, these that are in the net have not been so vigorous, but no danger of black fly on those. I've got quite a few pods in there, so it won't be long before we're taking a crop off of them. Take a look at the parsnips, which I put in last week. And well, there's lots of opinions as to whether parsnips transplant or not. I don't seem to have a problem. Um, and these have stood up and are growing well. So there's not a huge amount in there, less than I would normally grow, but we didn't eat too many last year. So I think that's gonna be about right. Every year I try and modify what I grow to get it about to what we eat. That's the aim, no wastage. And we give some away if there's a bit of extra. And these leeks are looking well, all stood up now. And I'll get the hoe in between here at some point. I've done it recently. And talking about hoeing, well, take a look at these paths that I put that oscillating hoe through. They're fantastic. They were almost green with weed and now we're back to brown. So I should be doing that again. Hoeing through those paths with that oscillating hoe works really well. I've given a check this morning on all of the squash and pumpkin. Looked under my slate trap, so I've got no slugs from last night. And there's very little damage indeed to these plants and they've got going. And that's the important time when you start to see additional leaves on these you know that they're underway and it won't be long before this area will look completely different completely covered in leaves and you'll probably see very little else and it's exciting then to watch the pumpkins and squash appear so pleased with those my little lily in the pond has now got four leaves in. I was worried at the beginning that it wasn't going to get going, but I lifted it slightly and that had a big effect. And now we've got four leaves on the surface, another one I can see coming up. And that is a miniature lily, so it's never going to be big in this pond, but then this pond isn't particularly large. And this pennywort is, well, it's interesting. Sometimes it's got tiny little leaves on and sometimes it really gets cracking and the leaves get bigger. It seems to be affected by the water level recently. In the warm weather, the water evaporated a little, a little, and it got a bit exposed, but it's fighting back. But the whole pond area is looking nice now, and the foxgloves are looking particularly attractive. Well, the courgettes, probably the most successful courgettes I've grown. They have usually gone in and gone very yellow and been a bit of a struggle. These have been fantastic and they were helped tremendously by the warm weather that we were having when I planted them. But I can see flowers down in there now. And these collars, they worked really well because they made sure that any breeze that we had on the plot didn't knock the plants back and forth. And therefore that's enabled them to stabilize, I think. And I'm quite pleased with that. And this one in here is looking really good. So there's a couple of varieties there. We've got courgette, dwarf, uh, dwarf bush, verde de Milana. And then these are, that's the long variety. And Mrs. K didn't want the striped one this year. So none of those are the striped variety. And looking down at my potatoes in the background there, you can see the yellowing of the potatoes that came out of the polytunnel. Disappointed that they were so adversely affected by the heat. And I think to be honest, they're probably gonna wane now and I'll harvest those early. The others by comparison, are just going from strength to strength. And I won't be growing potatoes in the polytunnel again. This is definitely perfectly acceptable. And these purple ones are Charlotte. And those at the back, oh, they're pinky as well, but that's Desiree. And that's gonna be a fine crop of potatoes this year. Down this end of the plot, I thought I'd look at this gooseberry. 
You can see now it's got a lot of fruit on it. They're all very small, but I don't think I remember having that much fruit on this bush for a long time, and it's helped tremendously by opening up this area and trimming the canopy of the holly tree. So hopefully we'll get some fruit off of that. But it's good to see it fruiting anyway. Well, let's get into the polytunnel and see what's happening in there. I'm going to have to find a couple of trays to do a bit of sewing today. And there should be some space in there, I'm sure, to get things going. Unfortunately, during the week, we had a cat found its way into the tunnel and decided to wreck things a little bit. And you never guess where it went. Yes, in the carrot box. I've sorted it out now and things seem to have stabilized. So the carrots are coming on well. You can see the ones that are transplanted. Some of them, you just wouldn't recognize the difference from the original carrots I never moved. This one, it did struggle because I took some carrots out of the base of that. But you can see now I've got some fresh growth in there. And I've still got these mul multiple clusters. And I just want to make sure these work out before I snip those. Uh, tomatoes, I've got my first coloured tomato. Looking nice. So looking forward to that. And the plants are really getting going. This one's falling out a little bit now, so it isn't going to be long before I think we attach him over to that rope. And the others, they're doing just fine. This one split into two and it's still too far away for me to pull it over to this rope, but that's what I'd like to do. When it gets up a bit taller, I'm going to have one on there and one on there, but they're coming on nicely. Lettuce, well, we're eating lettuce, but we're getting to the point where they're starting to change shape and get a bit taller. Those go to the chickens, but we're enjoying fresh lettuce whenever we want it. And here you can see the beetroot, which I grow in the tunnel so that I get some earlier beetroot. And just look at these, they're just flying. And there's clusters of couple together in places. I should just pull one of those and let the other one grow on. And the cucumber, it's fairly slow growing, but it's moving on. And then up here, you'll know that I repotted these recently. They didn't seem to come to any harm for repotting and they're covered in tiny little fruit and trusses and the basil smell of visions needed for the basil it's just glorious when it gets warm in here that's what the polytunnel smells of we've got four of these little celeriacs from the saw blocks left so i think i'm going to pop those in somewhere today and that'll just make good use of them and then the only things i've got left is a little bit more celeriac here. This is, I think, a squash, which I'm gonna put in that last station. And yeah, things are going well. This pepper, it's got some nice size peppers on it already. And I'm hoping that's just gonna get going and bush up as the weather gets even warmer over the coming weeks. Well, here we are in late June and we're sowing again. And this time, we're going to be sowing some purple sprouting broccoli and the variety that I've bought this year is purple early sprouting broccoli very generic but it's from premier seeds and there's 3,000 seeds in there should last me about 10 years to be honest I won't keep it that very long but we will probably use them in successive seasons and the way I approach old seed is that I just use it until I find I get a period where it doesn't work and then quick pronto order to replace the seed that doesn't work and away you go again and that way you know seeds last for different periods of time and you never really know quite how long but I've got some seed that's still going probably four or five years later without any problem at all so that's my approach there is a bit of risk involved because the time it takes to germinate before you realize that the seeds had it you do 
perhaps lose a week or two, but no big deal. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some soil into this container-wise hard plastic sewing tray. This is a deep root tray, and I'm gonna fill this with early purple sprouting broccoli because I had such a great crop last year and we really enjoyed it. So with purple sprouting broccoli, I think if you can get it into the ground at some point in July, the plants get nicely established. At least that's what I'm told from my neighbor who grows fantastic purple sprouting broccoli. So that's what I'm gonna do. Get it into these trays, hopefully get it germinated and get some reasonable sized plants and then get it into the ground in July, get them established and then they can get through the winter without getting knocked around too much and that hopefully will give us a bigger crop. It certainly gives him enormous sized plants which he gets a great crop from. So quite simply going to put a couple of these in each of these stations and Hopefully at least one of them will germinate and then we'll be good to go. If you see me suddenly lurch to my head, well, it's because there's an awful lot of midges around this morning. We don't normally suffer from a load of midges, but today's just one of those days. So this is where I sowed the swede and the turnips last week. And I put it into this, well, I've never used before free compost and it came from Lidl's. And I gotta say I'm a bit worried. I haven't had any germination of anything and it's very woody this. So I don't know. I think what I'm gonna do is put these additional turnips in because I ran out of seed when I was doing this. So I'm gonna sprinkle some of these in there and then I'm gonna just top the whole thing off with a little bit of this normal compost just to see if I can get a bit more activity in the germination department, because, well, it's a little bit disappointing to see nothing having come up so far. So they're in, and we'll just sprinkle. Don't wanna absolutely cover it, otherwise I don't think we'll get anything up at all, but see if we can get some germination in these Swedes, which there's no activity at the moment. And I wonder whether these peat-free composts are quite as easy to germinate seed. I don't know. What's your experience? Are you using a peat-free seed compost successfully? Or are you finding it a little bit more challenging to get them to germinate when you're using what is probably a bit more woody? Or I suppose it depends upon the makeup of the particular compost, but by virtue of the fact there's no peat in it, it's obviously using other products that certainly in this one, don't seem to be quite as easy to get a germination from. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be interested to know what you're having success with so I can replicate it. Right, that's additional turnips in and hopefully those Swede will come through and we've got the spaces already set aside for them. Good times. So maintenance of this covered area is fairly straightforward. I do have to pick up the grass that I've cut from time to time because, well, you know what it's like when you get mounds of grass. It just attracts the slugs. So. I have to keep on top of that and then occasionally you get a weed that finds its way through the membrane and I just pull it up but generally it's pretty much maintenance free. It's worse at the edges where the grass is trying to encroach and I've got to be careful when I strim around the edges because it's very easy to rip the membrane which I have done a couple of times and that will result in me having to replace it, I guess, at some time. But I'm hoping to get a few more years out of this yet. And it's working pretty well. I guess I can patch it if I need to. But, yeah, it's good.
Well, at risk of repeating myself, it's been a pretty bad year for rhubarb flowering. And hopefully that's the last one to come out. And I'm gonna leave these just so that they can recover from having had a really strong flowering session. But it's not all the rhubarb, the other variety, just fine. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button. And if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochenbar.